kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone. So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the... Um, and your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, Yep. Added benefits are you can open up open up an office, the conversational benefits. But with my vision now, I want to you know help 1,000 agents be just like me or achieve the goals uh, that I have achieved. Right. Yes. So uh, to do that, I need to operate at the highest level possible in the real estate sales industry, and that's that's pretty much what why I'm a broker and not an agent. Well, that's awesome. You know, you're doing it to help people, <clears throat> doing it to help people. Now, obviously they have splits and everything in it being an agent versus being a broker. When you became a, a broker, did that help with the splits? Like, with the brokerage I was with before, um, yeah. there wasn't a lot of benefit. Um, with EXP, there is no benefit, there is the same. Uh, okay. EXP is a model where EXP Realty is a model. It's a cloud-based brokerage. Yep. Uh, we're in all 50 states. We are in 23 countries. It's a model designed to kind of eliminate that barrier and create a playing field for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, a broker, the added benefit is you could have uh, your own office. You could open up an office without approval, right? Like you don't have to get another broker to kind of sponsor your office and all of that. Uh, but the splits are saying, it's the same. It's same as an agent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I uh, so it's to, and you said you've built how many teams? Oh yeah. So uh, I have my personal team, right? Uh, yep. Which I actually broke in the middle when I left my previous broker. I, I had sixteen agents in my team. Uh, when I decided to leave the other brokerage and let go of all the agents, I broke the team. I was like, there is no more team. Uh, just to see like who was in the team because of they saw a benefit with me and i was leaving so i didn't want to make it like, oh you are in the team so you have to leave with me i'm like whoever voluntary comes they come and also another thing was i kind of i was no starting the team so i kind of recruited a lot of people that were not really fit to be in my culture right like yep. they were just in it for money they saw uh you know, oh, this guy has so much opportunities. I'm going to go join his team and I'm going to just get rich overnight. Right. But they didn't have the work ethic. So I had to kind of break the team, redo the team. So I, I rebranded the team when I came to EXP. Uh, uh, I partnered uh, with another team. Uh, this was uh, 2022 where mm -hmm. I went and I'm silent partner. I went and set up their <laughs> generation systems, their recruiting and retaining system, basically training and coaching system. Uh, I'm also yep. in the process of talking to a couple, of, a couple of other teams. So moving forward, my model pretty much is like I'm. I train. I obviously run my local team. Uh, I'll train and coach agents uh, who are nationally or locally who are you know who want, who see the value in my training and coaching and want to join into EXP uh, sponsored by me. They would get access to all of my training and yeah. coaching. <clears throat> I would partner up with teams that are struggling, that don't have the systems, don't have, don't know how yep. to grow, don't know how to scale. So, uh, yeah, so that, uh, and probably in the process of partnering up with two other teams, but th 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 we'll see how that goes. We'll see how far I can go with partnerships and mergers. Yeah. yeah. And I think the thing is, is that partnerships, and I've had to learn this on my own because I started with a partnership, and partnerships are good when you have open communication about the roles, okay? But not only that, but updated communication with the roles. So in the beginning, I'm doing X, Y, Z. As those X, Y, Z, uh, and you're doing uh, A, B, C, okay? Yeah. And, and then as X, Y, Z become, goes from this much of the, the tasks, Okay, so 50% of the task to now 10% of the task. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we need to reevaluate. You're okay, right. Now you you're say, you're you exactly know. right. You have you have experience in a partnership for I, sure. I, I, I do because that's exactly what happened with my partnership is yeah. 
I, I was doing, you know, as our task went up, you know, I was doing 50%. Mine ended up being more than 50% because I was here local. He was not. Hmm. And his task went down. Yep. So it was, uh, it, it, it was crazy and whenever i tried to discuss it with him you know it was kind of shot down so yeah. i eventually had to go out on my own yeah. and you know i'm like i'm sorry but you know what he kept the i gave him all the whole business i literally just left the business i said you have the website you have the the seo that we put into it you have you know um and kind of go from there so yeah yeah so so th this is something i learned uh probably last four years three years uh, is that uh, from tony robbins business mastery and he talks about partnerships and relationships uh is that it comes down to two things okay with yeah. any relationships with any partnerships it's that mutual respect and mutual trust right yes and mutual respect and mutual trust comes from mutual interest being met right so as soon as you have mutual interest not being met so one party might have their interest met being met which was your partner who had it all yep so, <laughs> you're doing everything right i'm still a 50 percent partner and you were not happy with that yep. your interest was not being met we're putting in more time what would happen is that mutual trust and respect would start get being affected. So as soon as mutual trust and respect gets attacked, the relationship starts deteriorating, right? Our yeah. partnership starts deteriorating. Yeah. Yeah. And what's funny is, is that everybody's like, well, <clears throat> maybe he put up the money in the beginning. And I'm like, no, actually we did 50, 50 on the money, mm -hmm. you know, on all the marketing. Then we got it to a point where the business was taking care, taking care of itself you know mm. and we are hiring virtual assistants to yeah. and well it turns out the virtual assistants wasn't taking my job it was taking most of his yeah you know so it was it was taking a bit like that much of mine yeah. you know of my time so yeah but, you gotta be fluid yeah. for partnerships to work you gotta be fluid you gotta have open communication you gotta 100%. have you gotta have this conversation about the mutual respect and trust right and the mutual yep. is being met like hey for us to work for a long term, we're not just, you know, you gotta be clear, like we're not just doing it for now. We're gonna, we are gonna do it for, you know, 10 years, five years, whatever it is, right? You gotta set that yep. goal, you gotta set that destination. And throughout this journey, we gotta always talk about this mutual interest, right? Yep. Our mutual interest today is this, but it might change one year from now. And we gotta talk about it and get on the same page about it. And sure, it, it might not work. Like at certain point, our mutual interest may not be the same anymore and we might it might not be possible for us to meet in the middle right yeah. and it will you know you've got to talk about how you're going to exit to the partnership yeah That's and actually cool. going going into a partnership the big mistake that i did was um i didn't talk about that in the beginning mm -hmm. yeah and you have to have those conversations hey what if one of us decides to leave how is okay. it going to happen? Yeah. How is it going to happen? Mm -hmm. Not saying that we're planning it's, it's we're not planning for an exit right yeah. now. We're just how would that work in in your ideal situation? Mm -hmm. You know, say yeah. we get up to millions and millions of dollars and I want to go build my own team now. Mm -hmm. You know, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Now, so it, the key thing is, is we'll, we'll kind of get back off of that in just a moment. But the key thing is, is that if you have a partnership, keep open communication and talk about everything before you go into that partnership. Exactly. Yeah. You gotta Make sure you both on the same page. And even if you are in the beginning, you still have to keep that communication going on further down the road. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, so with that, uh, my my brother says my my camera is laggy and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it, it's probably my internet here. Um, you know, it, uh, we had the storm last night. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, the key thing is is that you got to have those open communications. You got both about got to be on the same page. And if you're not, then just exit gracefully. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. um, unfortunately, my exit was not as gracefully because 
of my partner chose that. So yeah. he, he didn't like the fact that I was leaving. So the uh, way I look at it, like you left with grace. Yeah, you, you I did. Gave, you left. So just look, hey, you did your yep. part. And you, exactly. Uh, when it come to, came to grace, right? And yep. and end of the day, you will always get it in return. Your return yep. on investment is guaranteed in the way the nature of the universe, right? Um, yeah. And leave it at that, right? And what's funniest is that that's where I started building this community, yeah. you know? Yep. So, you know, um, that's the thing, you know, um, but hey, this, you know, this, in my coaching, this is my second law of mindset is uh, everything happens for your own good, not for for a good reason, for your yeah. own good. Everything that happens to us in life, right? It yep. happens for our own good. And you can see like the partnership didn't work out, but now look at you, right? You're building yes. it on your own, which is amazing. Oh yeah. So, and that's the thing like, so um, let me kind of get off, off that topic real quick and, and, you know, let's move forward here. And um, I actually, you know, we're coming up on 40 minutes here. Yeah. I have a, a actually a very important question because I'm a wholesaler. A lot of people in our communities are wholesalers, okay? And if they're not wholesalers, they're either investors or and, and want to work with good agents that can find them good deals. Yeah. Not this, okay, I'm going to give you $10,000 off of retail price and, you know, and, and you're going to call it a deal. No, that doesn't work that way, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, you know, so... I, uh, how can wholesalers work with agents? Cause I primarily do off market, yeah. not on market. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I want, what I want to do is I want to develop relationships with, um, other agents and Hey, you get that property that is distressed. It's a hoarder property, whatever the case may be. Send and them our way. We'll pick it up. Yeah. Exactly. Send them our way. We'll pick it up. We'll, we'll work with you. I'll JV it with that agent. Yeah. Yeah. And split my damn, split my commission. I don't care. You don't have you to know? do that. Like, hey, this yeah. is too much buffer. <laughs> this is too so, much <laughs> like, but this but, is how, yeah, I'll, I'll break it down. For I want to, I want to make it a win-win for everybody. This is how know? it could be win-win. Um, well, first of all, Hey, you come across properties that are distressed and will be harder to sell on the market and the seller wants like move, move it fast don't waste yep. time putting it on the market send it to us we're gonna pick it up right yep in return what we will do is when we come across which you did without even yep. you, you sent me that uh listing by the way i've been in communication with him and uh we, we set a time for us to go out he had something come up but i'm gonna follow up with him that's and awesome in return what i will do is i talk to sellers all the time right yep Whenever there is a seller that wants higher than what we can afford to buy it for, kind of like a retail price, I'm going to get them connected with you. That's the yes. reason, right? Yep. Beyond that, how else can wholesalers and investors work with real estate agents? Um, and I haven't seen, there are some wholesalers doing that. Mm -hmm. We've got a deal that is kind of tight on the margin, right? Or yep. it doesn't have to be tight on the margin. Uh, put it on the market. Put it on yeah. the MLS, uh, uh, your assignable interest. As long as the broker allows it, you can actually put your uh, assignable interest onto MLS as long as the seller is aware of it, right? You get the permission. Right. Uh, it's called an innovation agreement. Uh, uh, so you could do that, right? To, and work with the uh, uh, realtors will love it. They want listing. <laughs> they, they want yeah. It, no matter what. And actually, in my contract, it in for marketing. I put in there that I'm allowed to put it on the MLS. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's one so. way you can build a relationship with realtors. Uh, beyond that, I would say, um, see, what wholesalers and investors, actually, in my opinion, I, I have this opinion because I started investing, right? I was in, yep. uh, you know, Dan Merrill's community, I bought his programs and, you know, learned a lot about real, uh, real estate investment back then. And then when I got into real estate, I started working with real estate investors. I was always like, by now I have probably worked with over 150 investors. 
So uh, yeah. we know exactly what an investor looks for, right? The cap rate, return on investment, and all of that, right? Re you know, renovation project and all mm -hmm. of that, right? So um, you got, if you're an investor out there or a wholesaler out there, you want to work with agents that are kind of investor savvy, right? Not all real yep. estate agents. I would say majority of real estate agents. Not that they don't want to work with investors, they just don't know how to. There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room 